You are listening to Family Today with Fumi Johnson. Hello. Hello, hello. This is Family Today with Fumi Johnson and the beautiful Friday morning. Ha. Huh. We have a very hot topic to discuss today. I'm not going to open the phone lines, but I will want you to listen attentively. It's a topic that is so sore. Most people don't attempt to talk about it, especially if you are from the church. You said to yourself, this is not possible. This will not happen to me. But it's something that does happen to us. I want you to listen. Some call it the betrayal of trust in our relationship, you know. But I want to talk today about how to restore trust when it's been broken. Is it possible for trust to be broken? I said after a major betrayal of trust in your relationship, it might feel like a challenge to move on as a couple. And in some instances, it will be. But if you and your partner decide to stay together after a cheating episode, you can work on things. You know, rebuilding trust and see yourself making that mistake to be a stepping stone and not a sinking sand. So before I start, I want to say this. You know, I, as a marriage counselor, I have seen so many instances and these are real. And these are real. Happening between people of the same faith, you know, with the same common values. Yes, even in the church. So I want us to see it as something that is very serious. And I want to tell you that there are instances of this that happen but God can also mend it. Before you tell me, oh, but we are allowed to divorce on the ground of adultery. I know that. But let's look at this. I want to start with these scriptures. I'm going to start from the book of 1 John chapter 1. And I read from verse 8. So if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. And if you say you do not have sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. What am I saying? There is no one without sin. The woman that was caught in the very act of adultery was asked to, I mean like, where are your accusers? Jesus said to that woman and to the crowd, if any of you have not committed any sin, throw the first stone. And each of them started leaving. And then when they had all left, it was just the woman and Jesus. And Jesus said, where are your accusers? Said, They've gone. Said, then I do not condemn you. Say, go and sin no more. I want to say the same thing to you. I am not condoning adultery. I'm, on, I'm not condoning infidelity. But what I'm saying is this. If you have slipped, if you have made a mistake, not that you are sorry because you are caught, but you totally are repenting because you know that what you have done is wrong. You have broken the edge. And the Bible says, whoever breaks the edge, the serpent will strike. You know that you have betrayed the confidence and the trust of your spouse and you are genuinely repentant. Then this is for you. If you're a spouse that have been cheated on or you're the one that have cheated, I want you to listen so closely. This is the beginning of the year and we need to put records straight. Because whatever you do becomes a pattern even for your children and your children's children. So we need to make sure we get this right. So I, I'm sharing with you that God does not condone iniquity, but he forgives it. So that's on the premises which I'm starting. Let's also look at Titus chapter 3. I read from verse 3. Say, at one time, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. At one time. There's no one of us that had been perfect right from the beginning. We all had made mistakes and we all are still, you know, making mistakes. So what I'm trying to say is, to the one that was cheated on, please have mercy. Let me continue that scripture, Titus chapter 3. It says, we lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us. We are saved. You are standing because the kindness and the love of God has appeared unto you. He saved us by his kindness. He saved us by his mercy. He saved us by his love. Not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. 
So what I'm trying to say is this. Yeah, I know you've been cheated on, but you are saved by grace. Now, a lot of times we try to look for excuses and reasons, you know, why people cheat or something. No, 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 let's just go there. Let's take it that this person made a mistake. I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm not going to open the phone lines today because I have a lot of things to share and I want you to listen. By the grace of God, next week I will open the phone lines, but you can do this. Send me an email with your questions, with your brokenheartedness. Send it to me, familytoday at fumijohnson.com. Send me the email and then go to my Instagram page and Facebook page and then you can you can send me a private message as well. Fumi Johnson 1, numeric 1, Fumi Johnson um, um, 1 on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And if you want to send me a WhatsApp chat or WhatsApp question, you can send to 0817-313-6193. 0817-313-6193. We're talking about restoring trust after a betrayal of trust, after infidelity, after your spouse has committed adultery. And don't be deceived that it's only men that do commit adultery. Women too do commit adultery. And adultery does not even start overnight. There is emotional infidelity. And some of you are already in that state. Before it leads to a full-blown physical act, you can listen to me and you can stop it now. I'm laying the foundation for my discourse. Why am I talking about restoring trust when it's been broken? Yes, when you have been betrayed, you have a right to walk away. But if you choose to stay, you can make it happen and your marriage can be as though it never happened. I'm going to share one or two more scriptures. Um, let's look at 1 John chapter 3, uh, verse 4. It says, everyone who sins breaks the law. This is to say that I am not saying that it is right for you to commit adultery. In fact, sin is lawlessness. But you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins. And in him is no sin. So no one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. What am I saying? I am not saying that because I am talking about restoring trust that you can, you can um, just continue to do it. You can't continue to do it. You did it. It was a mistake, I believe. And you're saying no. And there is no justification for sin. There is no right way of doing a wrong thing. A wrong thing would always be wrong. So I'm not justifying sin. And the last scripture I want us to look at is Romans chapter 6 verse 1. One of my favorites. Shall we say then, shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? I don't care who has told you, I cheated because she's not a good wife. I cheated because she's not providing for the family. I cheated because she's not fine anymore. After the fourth child, he has a big tummy or, you know, he just doesn't live up to my expectation. There is no reason to break the covenant. There's no reason to do what is wrong. So you have to see and admit that what you have done is wrong. Okay. Oh, because I've been married for 10 years, uh, we don't have a child uh, and there's so much pressure and my family are saying, you know, I should go back and um, see what I can do. There is no justification. You married for better, for worse. And you are in a covenant relationship. It's not a contractual relationship that you can just opt out of. And God was a witness to that wedding. So you can't just afford to do that. So let's go on now. I want to talk about how to restore, how to restore, Restore trust once it is broken. How do you restore trust? Number one, don't assume that the relationship is over. I know there's been a hitch. I know there's been a glitch. I know there's been an error. But if you are willing to fight for that relationship, then it is not over. It is not over until you conclude that it is over. So take, 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 take this, you know. I said, sometimes people move very quickly to thinking that the relationship must be over when in fact repairs and healing of the relationship is very possible i'm saying the first thing i want everyone listening to me especially men and women that are hurt i know i have more women that are hurt about their relationship but i want you to know that the fact that that man cheated on you okay does not mean that is the end of the relationship repair is possible healing is possible and I'm bringing that healing to you. The Bible calls him the balm in Gilead. It comes with the soothing balm that can ease that pain. You said, really? Yes, it can. It is better if there is repentance and there is restoration than for you to go your separate ways. Divorce is never the final option. Divorce is not always palatable 
Okay? I know some people just, you know, call your bluff and say, I don't care. Those are not the people I'm talking about. I'm talking about that partner that had, that partner that failed you, but he's saying, if you give me another chance, I will make it good. That's what I'm talking about. So, so if it feels truly over, you know, I, I can't really help you. But if you give it a chance, I can work with you. And these are my candidates today. If you're there and you're saying to yourself, I, I don't know, if you can help me. I am here to say to you, I, I stand, you know, as the mouthpiece of God to say, if you give God a chance, it would make that marriage to stand again. Like I said, you can send me a private email, family today at fumijohnson.com. Family today. A lot of times they they, they complain that I'm too fast. So I'm going to, to make it a little slow. <laughs> and I'm not taking questions today because I have so much to talk about. Family today at fumijohnson.com. You can send me, you know, um, that email and you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter, Fumi Johnson Numeric one okay so don't assume the relationship is over i have 16 points i may not finish it today if i don't i'll continue some other time but let's see how far we can go okay uh number two don't keep the feeling to yourself don't keep the feeling to yourself the bible says the multitude of counsel there is safety there is safety if you include others i said whilst you might not want to shout from the rooftop <laughs> that you're having relationship problem it's not a good idea to keep these issues to, I mean, a secret either. This can be harmful. I'm not saying run to your mother-in-law or even to your own mother or father. Their own emotions, just like it's not advisable for a doctor to be the one to treat his own wife or his own daughter or son, you know. But you might go to, you know, um, seasoned, trained um, counselors. Go to ministers of the gospel who understand what the will and the mind of God is and let them see if they can guide you through. I'm not saying just anybody. You need to be sure. You need to be led. Okay? So, um, couples tend to compound the trauma of infidelity by creating this small cycle within which the healing is to occur. So, go ahead and discuss your feeling with a loved one or possibly even a therapist to start the healing process. So, what is point number two? Don't keep it to yourself. Number one is don't assume that the relationship is over. Number two is don't keep it to yourself. Okay? Don't do it alone. There is help. There is help. God is your very present help in this time of trouble. A broken uh, um, um, trust can be very, very uh, traumatizing. You're saying to yourself, oh, I really trusted you. I gave up everything for you. Oh, what is happening now? But you see, it can be restored. Number three Okay, I'm going to use this. It's not acceptable in English, you know, but I'm going to do it. Okay, we're going to take a break now, you know, and after that, I'll continue my points. Stay tuned. Paul says it is better for a single man to marry than to burn. Are you single, married, widowed, separated or divorced? Join me on Family Today. Family Today with Fumi Johnson is one program that will bring you in alignment with who you truly are and open your mind to how you rock your significant interpersonal relationships while sidestepping the landmines, culture, religion and society have laid in your path. Family Today with Fumi Johnson goes where others are shy to go and shines the light in the dark corners others have forgotten. Tune in at 11.30 a.m. every Friday to listen to Family Today with Fumi Johnson on Inspiration 92.3 FM. And we're back to the program. Okay, you're back. This is Family Today with Fumi Johnson. I'm talking about how to restore trust. And I'm going to come purely from a biblical perspective as a counselor, a marriage counselor, who, whose uh, foundation is on the, the principles of God's word. Number three is don't be obsessed, you know, with asking your partner for details. I know it's the natural thing. How did it happen? Okay, there's some, you will still have to ask some questions, but the details of, so, hey, you now went to the hotel, uh -huh. now you now stripped her off, uh -huh. was she wearing a pink underwear or a yellow one or a white one? When you go into those details, it, it, it forms a graphic image in your brain and it becomes more traumatizing for you. So don't be obsessed with asking your partner, you know, for those minute details but this is fl closely followed with my point number four this one is, i'm going to use this english language that we're not allowed to use in school i said don't not talk about it at all okay you don't do double negation but i want to say that because i'm using don't for all my calls you know don't not talk 
about it at all. Now, most times when this happens, your partner wants to know and he or she will keep asking questions. What went wrong? Was I the one? How did you go into it? Why did you do it? You must be ready to answer each time those questions come. I say, all of us, say, I mean, all, 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 all we say is, you know, it's important that the couple be open in talking about their different experiences and emotions about the betrayal. Even if your spouse say, you know what, I really feel bad. I don't feel like talking to you. I don't want us to eat together. Maybe, maybe you always eat together. Please be ready for that. Let he or she express, you know, their feelings, their hurts, their, their disappointments, whatever they want to express. Don't shut him or her up. Let him or her talk about it. That is point number four. And number five, don't minimize the impact it's as hard. Don't minimize the impact. Don't say, oh, it's already two months and you're still talking about it. In as much as I'm not asking you to celebrate anniversary of the infidelity, you know, they say some people will wake up and say, oh, it's 11th of January. They say, what happened on that? They say, uh-uh, is it not last year? This time last year, exactly. It was a Thursday that you did this. Oh, I remember it. No, I'm not condoning that. But don't give a time li limit. So you should be able to mourn this for one month and after that, stop. No. Healing for each person differ. So you have to allow the person to go um, gradually. I say cheating in any way can make the person who, has, who was cheated on feel completely insecure. So you have to tell your partner, you know, when you are feeling insecure and what they can do to make you feel better. What I say to people is, if your spouse is not um, sensitive to your need at that point, what you can do is tell him or her, you know what, I would rather you say this. Can you just write me a text? Can you reassure me, you know, of your love or something? You have to like help the person to be able to stand again because what we are, our goal is to restore to restore that trust that has been broken. Number six, I'm talking, I have 16 points. I know I may not be able to finish it, but I'll stop wherever I'm able to stop. Number six is don't try to get even. Okay, don't try to get even. One of the biggest mistakes you can make is trying to get even with your partner, perhaps by going out and getting back at them. You, you, see, you can't say because your partner cheated, you also want to cheat. You become, you become a cheat too. Okay, if I stole someone's money and the person comes to steal mine back, we have two thieves. So you don't want to add that to your nomenclature. Someone has made a mistake. You don't have to go do it. So don't do it. There is no justification for sin. Like I said, there is no right way of doing a wrong thing. So this person has made a mistake. This person has fallen. You are hurt. But going to do the same thing makes you just to be as weak and as vulnerable and as foolish as whatever that person is. So don't do it. I'm saying it again. Don't try to get even. We're talking about how to restore um, trust. Um, I also, talk, I mean, you can um, look look at um, Luke chapter 6, verse 27. He said, but to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Okay, if someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other. That is the instruction that Jesus gave us. What does it mean to turn the other? It means don't retaliate. Don't pay that person back in his own coin. Don't do exactly what the person expects you to do. Do the exact opposite. Show mercy, show grace. That is what I'm talking about. Don't try to do the same thing. And number seven, don't hold a grudge. Okay, when 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 you are when you're betrayed, okay, once grudge was has been lodged in your brain, you have to dislodge it because you want to be resentful, you want to be angry, you know. That's why I I am I'm advising you to give room for conversation. You may keep quiet for a while, but it's important for you to talk about it. But don't go into asking for the details of you know how many nights, how many times, how many. No, when you go into all those, it's going to hurt you the more. But you may want to know some things, but not too many things. And then number eight, don't be paranoid and suspicious. It's natural for you to suspect the move, especially if he says it happened, you know, along Ozumba Road. So each time the person says, I'm going to Ozumba Road, say, eh, you're going. And then you start, no, no, 
it's let's take it that it's a mistake and you're giving the person you know the chance to start true trust demands that we tolerate what we don't know about our partners and intimacy can easily be squeezed out by these attempts at control so don't be like you know hey suspect every move except if the person is a serial adulterer or is, is, is living in sin. I'm talking to people who have made a mistake. I, I, I counseled a couple recently and I spoke to the husband and to the wife, you know, separately. And I found out that, yes, the man made the mistake and sincerely, you know, he was really to tears and say, believe me, I know I made a mistake. I know I hurt her. I know I did the wrong thing, but I wish there's a way I can just, you know, change the hand of clock and take things back, you know. I want to, to make it up to her. But she's not giving me a chance. She suspects every move. She queries every action. I don't know what to do. And I'm saying to you, yes, you may lose a good man if you are paranoid and um, suspicious. Um, number nine, don't try to rebuild the trust overnight. Now, a lot of times, the man that cheated or the woman that cheated always expects that, okay, I've said sorry, we can move on. No, it doesn't work that way. It takes weeks, it takes days, it takes months, it's, sometimes it takes years. You can't just build it overnight. I think um, couples can also sabotage themselves by expecting trust to be there, hundred percent, you know, of the time immediately. Understanding that trust is incremental helps the offending partner realize that they haven't lost ground. Trust is what? Incremental. Just because they seem to have, to have trust one minute, but not the next, does not mean they are not building on it. Forgiveness, particularly for something as painful as an affair, doesn't come all at once, you know? So you can't build it overnight. I want to digress and tell you this. Tonight, I will be in a meeting, a prayer meeting, praying, okay? It's, it's, it's about the 10 days of fire we've been on and today, tonight is the last night. I want you to join me at number 25, McQueen Street, Saboyaba. It's a six hours prayer meeting. We want to pray our life into divine order in 2019. One of the things you can come and do is to pray for healing, for restoration. One of the things you can come to pray because our God, according to the book of Hebrews 12, 29, is that our God is a consuming fire. What does a consuming fire do? It consumes everything that comes, you know, in its pathway. It will destroy the work of your enemy. It will destroy, you know, strong holes that have held you bound. And it will purify you and make you a better person. Because these things, let me jump to my number 16 point. I said, don't stop praying together. When infidelity happens, the first thing is that you throw out of the window is you stop praying together. But I want to share this scripture with you. And from Matthew chapter 18, it says, truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there I am, there I am with them. What am I saying? Like I said, in multitude of counsel, there is safety. Like I said, if two of you can agree together, praying, then if where two or three are gathered, what are all these pointing to? One, don't stand alone. Two, still hold on to your partner and pray together. Three, get other people involved. If you want to join me tonight, come to number 19 stroke 25, Mark Cohen, and let's pray together about your life. About, now, is it only for those that have been cheated on? No, 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 no. It's for everybody. This is the beginning of the year and people are still trying to fashion out, you know, how to make the year work. Last week, I talked about it, I mean, rest, I mean, how to make, um, you make, what do you, what, do you, what do you call those things you make every year? New Year resolutions, res resolutions and how 77% of people, you know, break the resolution before the end of January. Now, you can make your resolutions and keep them and exceed your own expectation but you can't do it in your strength come and receive the help of god and let's join me as we pray together at the capstone you know at number 19 to 25 mcqueen you can join me i want to continue i said don't try to build trust overnight and then the next thing is try to heal you know don't try to heal all by yourself don't try to heal all by yourself you can't do it alone okay it's often overlooked that the offending partner is hurting too the offended and the offending is hurting too okay they may have very reasonable grievances you know but you cannot just keep quiet don't try to heal all by yourself and please don't ever blame your spouse for 
what you did. That you cost it. No. No. Nobody cost you to do anything. You have the right and the power to control your action. Oh, yo, we have not slept together for six months. Oh, we don't sleep in the same room. That is not a justification for it. Okay? There are proper ways to handle things. You cannot justify what you have um, done wrong. They don't make your entire relationship about the affair. Every minute, every second, when they said oh, the lady was wearing red, anytime you see red color, you say, oh, uh -huh, there we go again. And then at breakfast, if, if someone buys you a red gift, you say, oh, no, I don't want a red gift. You know, and you just make everything go around the affair. Don't do that. You're going to make yourself, you know, lose the essence of the relationship. Okay? There are other sins, too, apart from committing uh, adultery. So you can't say, okay, because we've had an affair, we can't move on. Number 12, um, this should be number 13 now. Don't try to figure out what went wrong. If you try, you will get into that other one that I said, don't be paranoid, okay? You might want to be like, um, uh, infidelity doesn't mean that the relationship is bad, that okay, maybe I wasn't cooking well, or maybe I don't satisfy him in bed, or maybe these, no. There are people that have perfect marriage, or maybe he's unhappy, or maybe because he's lost his job, or, or maybe, don't try to figure it out. It is just sin, and it is Satan, and he preys on anyone that is not watchful. So be sober, be vigilant, be watchful because your adversary, the devil, he goes about seeking whom he may devour. Okay? Oh, I don't have a lot of time. I have to wrap, wrap, wrap up now. You can continue with me this conversation on my social media platform, Fumi Johnson Numeric One, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And you can send me a private uh, SMS 0802 318 2030 0802-318-2030 because I know this is a very, very touchy, touchy matter. That's why I'm giving all this concession and can send me an email, family today at fumijohnson.com. We will continue again, same time next week. This has been brought to you courtesy the capstone. That's why I'm inviting you to join me at the capstone church without walls tonight as we pray, shipping our 2019. I want to leave one word for the people that have been hurt and have been cheated on that the Lord, the Bam in Gilead, will restore you and will heal you, and that marriage can be good again. Thank you. Family Today with Fuma Johnson is powered by the capstone. Church with our walls. <laughs>